The Prince of Paxony, Chapter 5, The Interview. Aaron spent some time in the cell, but just how long he never knew. There was no night or day. The golden glow from the walls was constant. Twice he slept, and four times he was fed. A gold plate laden with some kind of bread that he'd never tasted before was pushed through the slot at the bottom of the door. It was very, very good. And a cu cup of water, golden cup of water. But Well, it seemed like water, but it was the most satisfying drink that Aaron could ever remember having. Every time that he was delivered food, an eye would appear in the hole in the door and watch him for a few seconds. But when Aaron tried to speak to the owner of the eye, there was no answer. So when the soldiers finally came for him, they did so in force, six of them, with drawn golden swords. Uh, they came to the cell and made signs that he was to accompany them. His hands were bound behind him. Two guards were positioned in front of him and four behind. Together, they marched him up the stairs, across the square and through a doorway on the opposite side. Down a long hallway filled with paintings of elves in various poses until they entered a large hall. The walls were lined with more soldiers and dominating the room was a throne with several important looking elves surrounding it. On the throne itself was an elf of gigantic proportions. His silver hair merged with a wispy silver beard which hung down to his waist. He seemed to fill the room with his presence. This was obviously the king of the elves. Aaron did not need to know. He did not need to be told what to do. He had been brought up as a royal prince and he knew his manners. The second that his escort stopped in front of the throne, he went down on one knee. The king raised his eyebrows. He spoke, but the words had no meaning to Aaron. The young prince looked about him, then said in a loud voice, I cannot speak nor understand the elf language. Can anyone here understand me? A subdued mutter went through the hall. Aaron looked back as again the king spoke, this time to one of his aides. The elf listened carefully, all the while looking Aaron in the face, then nodded as the king finished. He gave a short bow, then left, walking out through a door to the rear of the throne. Within a minute, he was back again, with a small figure shrouded from head to toe in a hooded silver cloak. The small elf walked straight to Aaron, who stood up at the approach. Then, without warning, the shadowed face inside the silver hood reached up and kissed him. Chapter 6. Explanations. It was disgusting. Aaron had never before been kissed by anybody other than his mother. And all the kisses that he'd ever received from her had been quite pleasant. But this kiss was horrible. It was totally unexpected, but that was the least of it. It was like his head had been invaded. A tongue had snaked into his mouth and then just as quickly withdrawn. An explosion of evil sensations went off inside his head as the mouth touched his and a foul taste was left as it withdrew. He gasped and put his hand up to cover his mouth. He staggered back and looked at the person before him in horror. Yuck, that was disgusting, he exclaimed. The whole hall burst into laughter at his outburst. 
Aaron started as he realised he was speaking a language that he had never before known. The small elf before him had thrown back its hood and was now bending over, spitting and wiping its mouth. As it straightened up, Aaron gasped as he saw the face, for the elf was a girl. And even with her face contorted with disgust, she was stunningly beautiful. Her face was framed by shoulder-long hair, each strand of which seemed to have been spun from silver and gold. She had a classic elf face with high cheekbones, small pointed ears and an upturned nose. But her eyes, her eyes were like black opals. They were a rich emerald green which turned into the smoothest brown as they caught the light. Through his amazement, Aaron heard the king's voice. May I introduce you to my daughter, the Princess Elflis. As a true elven princess, she has white magic and has, at my request, bestowed upon you the gift of tongues. I am King Rowan of the Mountain Elves. Perhaps now you will be able to answer my questions. Well, that explained everything. Aaron had heard the fables and folk tales about the elves' magic from his mother when he was a young boy, but he just discounted them as mere kid stories. So they were true. When the kid princess had touched his tongue her, with hers, she'd use magic to pass over the language. That explained the kiss. What a shame it tasted so foul. The princess Elflis was also wondering about that kiss. When her father had summoned her to aid his questioning of this prisoner, she had merely done her duty. She had done so many times before, for this was not the first human to wander into the land of elves. On each of those occasions, she had used the magic kiss to allow communication. And although there were many magic ways to give the gift of tongues, the magic kick kiss was the quickest. It was normal that she felt ashamed afterwards, because when the magic kiss, or indeed any magic, was used, all things became reversed. Whenever magic was employed, black turned into white, left became right and bad became good. Magic did that. When using magic, it was to be expected that kissing an ugly human would feel good. This enjoyment had made her ashamed each time in the past, but this time, magic kissing this human had been revolting. But that meant either the magic kiss had not worked, but it obviously had, or that kissing with this human without magic would be good. No, not good, wonderful. She was stunned. Well, boy, what have you to say for yourself? The elvish king was speaking again. Let's hear your story. You've had enough time in the dungeons to think up a good one. Mind you, I doubt it will make any difference. There is no doubt in my mind that you've come here to steal our gold. That's the only reason that humans ever come here. And we have our own ways of dealing with thieves. Oh, no, sir, said Aaron, regaining a little of his composure. I'm not a thief. I came here purely by chance. You see, sire, my name is the Prince Aaron of the Kingdom of Paxony. My father is the King... Wait! King Rowan interrupted. He gestured to his daughter, who walked behind Aaron, placing a hand on the man, back of the man's head, the young man's head, closing her eyes as she did so. Aaron 
felt a slimy, cold shiver feeling going down through his neck at her touch. God, it was horrible. She was using magic again. Now, continue, ordered the king. Aaron did his best to ignore the awful magic as he told his tale. All was silent in the hall as the elves listened, that is, until the name Scarba was mentioned. At the sound of her name, they hissed and jabbered excitedly. The king held his hand up for silence before motioning for Aaron to proceed. As he ended his story, the elf girl be behind him released her hand and the magic induced ice in Aaron's spine melted. He speaks the truth, father, she said simply. Rowan no, narrowed his eyes and looked at his daughter incredulously. The truth, he repeated. He seemed to come to a decision quickly. Untie him, he commanded, and bring cushions, food and wine. Soldiers rushed forward to obey the king. Within minutes, Aaron was seated with the king and the princess and being treated no longer as a prisoner, but as a royal guest. When Aaron was seated comfortably with a golden goblet of wine in his hand, the king addressed him once more. It seems that we owe you an apology, Prince Aaron. Is there anything we can try to do to make amends? Well, I am very concerned about my pony, sire, said Aaron. He's been without food or water since I've been in your uh, care, he added carefully. That can be taken care of by my staff, said the king. Is there anything else? Well, actually, sire, if you don't mind, I'd like to go myself. You see, the pony is rather special to me. More of a pet than a work animal. Oh, I understand completely, replied King Rowan. And I shall accompany you to find your pony. And on the way, you may tell me more of your homelands. The royal chariot was made ready. Within minutes, the king, his daughter, and Aaron were being pulled through the seats, streets of the Golden City by a team of elf warriors. Aaron thought that the journey seemed much shorter this time, but that was probably because on this trip he was riding in luxury, a far cry from the manner in which he'd arrived. The chariot stopped at the same familiar crossroads that he remembered, and they all dismounted. Aaron led the way through the inn and called out the back door into the courtyard, calling as he went, Smudge, Smudge, I'm back. As he entered the courtyard, he stopped so suddenly that the princess, who was following at his heels, bumped into him. The little grey pony, the deformed head, was nowhere to be seen. But the courtyard was not empty. Standing in the middle of the yard, noble and glorious, was a pure white, silver-winged unicorn. It swung around to face him, and a familiar, twinkling, dark brown eyes looked him full in the face. A booming voice rang out. Ah, so you're back at last, Aaron. And you brought some little friends with you too. The prince gasped as he recognised those friendly eyes. Smudge, he exclaimed. 